So the engine is here. It's been a long, long wait. It's a very special engine. Although it's just got some stock covers on it for now, just to keep it protected as it came in on the pallet, as you saw earlier. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of thought, a lot of planning. And the idea with the car was always we wanted to have it sort of high capacity. So what we've gone for in there is the HKS Stroger Kit. It's a 2.8 litre um, Stroger Kit with their crank, their rods, their pistons. On the top, we've got GTR camshafts and we've got some build behind this. So what we'll do, we'll show you an episode where we show you all the, the assembly of this engine right from scratch, from machining through to build um, and all the custom work and all the issues we had. One of the biggest problems with having an NA engine is to achieve high compression. And after lots and lots of research and looking at lots of ideas, we found that the cylinder head from the 2.5 Neo, the R34 Skyline, was different to everything else. So that's the head we went with. Um, and then obviously to mate to the 2.8 HKS cam to build for a turbo engine. So there's been a lot of playing about ideas and, and tinkering and coming up with the right combination. So the one problem we have with the Neo engine is all the buckets, the followers are aluminium, which are really not really going to be suitable for anything high power or high revving, which we're hoping this is going to be. So that had to be custom made and poor work folks will show you, but the recesses in the head were all machine and the buckets are actually custom made to suit this head. So we've never done that before. We've never gone that far, um, but it's, you know, we've gone, once you start building an engine like this, you can't really stop. You've got to go the whole hog and we've done everything now. And you see some HS pulleys, HS Kevlar belt. We use those in all the, all the engines that we build. Um, it's also got a custom sump on this, which suits the cross member from the Datsun. And a little while ago, before we had everything done, we sent the shell off with the donor engine and had Walton Motorsport build us this beautiful manifold. So that really is stunning. Um, and that's a six into two into one. And the way they've done that is also with a with a V-band flange. So we'll get this on and then we can make up the exhaust. So time to dress up the engine. Um, I'm getting the gearbox all cleaned up. I'm going to put it all together today and hopefully get it in. And then start to do all the bolts and all the fabrication work to get everything, um, all the custom pipe work. Like I said, exhaust system and all the fuel system start to get all that plumbed in and see how it looks. So exciting new stage, I think. This is going to be, you know, this is the heart of the whole car. This is, I think, a lot of what it looks like, but this is the important bit of the car. So I'm excited when this will go in. Right, so with the engine, um, all the Bolton stuff is here, which we bought ages ago. So I'll start with the wiring first. Now the wiring, what we decide rather than take an RB loom, it's worth starting from scratch. And the good thing with Link, their products, is you can buy everything off the shelf. So we've got a standalone ECU. We've gone for the Fury on this car that was recommended. And with that, rather than use the original wiring, we've got custom wiring. And Link make a plug and play harness. So you've got a, two, two sets of wiring with plugs that go straight into the ECU. And with a diagram, you can follow all the wires back to the engine. So that's the way we're gonna do it. So it's gonna be all fresh, all new. We can keep it very simple that way. And also, it's just going to work. It's going to be a lot easier. Everything's modern and exactly how we want it. So again, with the engine, we don't need the original sensor. So I don't need all the fuel system from the original car. We don't need knock sensors. We don't need idle control valves and so on because Link uh, have their own system so we can use theirs. So I've got a couple of knock sensors which I've put on the engine. I've got here um, pressure and temperature for the oil. It's like a combined sensor two in one so that's quite a unique idea they've got there and i've got air tape air temp sensor and the other important bit is a can lambda so we'll run that into um the, the downpipe um and then back into the ecu so that's all the kit there from link and we'll plug all that in and then make the custom loom once the engine is in um, the other bits i've got here uh, as new we use all their products normal fueling these are 500 cc top feed injectors which will go into the inlet. Now the inlet's not made just yet, so we've got everything else ready. Um, but rather than delay the project, I'm gonna get the engine in, start mocking up everything, get all the plumbing done, get the exhaust system made, get the prop in and so on, so we can get all that other work done. And then when Paul comes in next week, we can start to do all the wiring, because that's his expertise. I'm not very good at wiring. The other thing I've got here is from Extreme is a clutch. So we've got the full clutch kit um, and a single, We'll go up to a single plate organic because we're only going to be running, hopefully, I hope if it all goes to plan, sort of close to 300 horsepower. So we don't need anything too serious and that should be quite easy. A couple other bits I've got here from HKS is their top feed fuel rail. 
and we'll have some other bits again that's on the inlet when the inlet comes in because that's been custom made um, it's going to be quite a special manifold so when it comes in I'll show you that another thing I've got here is quite heavy line and this is an oil return so on the cylinder head we've put an adapter cover an opening there and the oil flow back into the bottom of the sump and I'm going to show you that on the engine just now what dad has done is made an insert because the original hole for the knock sensor was quite big and the new ones are a lot smaller so it's taken the end off the knock sensor tapped it um, drilled and tapped it so it's got a thread so we can bolt this on so that one's just finished there and that will bolt on there quite quite neatly and look original right, sometimes the simplest job take ages so I had to figure out the oil sensors now I've got two sensors which I'll show you here so I've got one which is the link dual sensor for the oil temp and oil pressure and the other one I've got is um, another oil pressure sensor which will be for the gauge that will be on the dash of the car because we're modernizing all the gauges we're not using the original Datsun ones um, they're all made by speed height in the US so there's a range of them and that's the feed for that so I need to plumb all this in now while the engine is out so I'll show you how we've done this let me bring the camera down a bit it'll be easier so the original oil pressure sensor the Nissan one that fitted here now we don't need that because we're not using Nissan parts um, so I can put a bung and I can close that off so that's easy enough so that that will go in there and I'll tighten that up um, and the only way I can really figure this out is to use something called a sandwich plate which um, goes between the oil filter and the housing on the engine so it sits like that so sandwiches in there um, and this one's made by racing lines uh, it's designed to have outputs the oil cooler, but I'm not going to run an oil cooler on this engine. So it'll be just the actual sandwich plate. There's a thermostatic section as well. So what I'm going to do is use the, the free-flowing sections, and I've got open uh, adapters there to run the sensors. So that I'll position here, and I can feed both sensors into this, so they go in fairly easily. Again, we'll tape on these and tighten them up, but just to show you how this is going to work. And the second one goes in there. So that's now running my sensors and I've bunged off everything else um, and what we'll do is put that into, situ into place there and there's a central nut which holds that in place. So now I've got my two sensors here and they can get a feed off the oil and I can run the wiring and the filter will eventually go back on and that's it. So it's quite a simple design. This came with the um, conversion kit from CX Racing in the US. So it's the radiator made for the 240Z, but having the in and out water pipes in the right place. So we'll get this, just test fitted in for now. So now this is in, there's a lot of space here. So what I'm gonna put in there is this um, Mishimoto fan. So this is a 12 inch fan, but it's a, a high flow race fan so one's going to be enough and that's going to sit quite comfortably here and then we'll fit that in there and we're not to clearance with the crank there and the and the pulley because we're not running, running a viscous fan obviously on this car so this will do the job and then as with the, all the rest of the wiring we can wire that in it comes with a fitting kit as well which um clips in through the rad the next thing i want to just quickly check is that the hose is all matched now these are all made by cx racing for the, the conversion so I'm just going to test fit this here so in the thermostat housing it's a slightly bigger diameter but it does fit it's a tight fit right there 
So that'll be okay, that one's good. And the top one, again, that's a nice fit. So without our inlet here, um, with the output for the water there, so we know that's gonna fit roughly in the right position. One thing I've got to do is fit the temp sensor. Now, when I spoke about the gauges earlier, I've got a sensor for the water temperature gauge and there's no logical place in the block. So I think I'm gonna to have to put this in one of the pipes so we can have that cut in there, have a, a fitting welded and have the sensor in there somewhere. So when all the wiring runs along this side, it can reconnect there. So I think so far so good. I'm happy with how that's looking. So we've got the engine in, we've got the exhaust manifold in, and now we've got the radiator in. So tomorrow what I want to do is come in and I've got the two outputs here which are going into the heater box. So they're coming from the inside, obviously they're, they're short now. But the to connect them to the RB engine, there's one water point there and one here at the front. So I can probably use one here. That will probably go there somehow. We'll trim the pipes or remake them. And I'll have to either extend that one or a new pipe from inside the car onto here. And that completes the coolant system. So I think so far so good. for the wiring now put all the sensors in and all the wiring I can find so when we put the knock sensors in I've now connected each one up and we've got the looms there ready to go back into the ECU and, and the ECU looms come out this way as well so we've got both knock sensors oil temp oil pressure and also the extra oil pressure sensor for the gauge um, we've got a water temp sensor for the gauges as well I put that in there temporarily so we can follow the wires we've also got in there the um, trigger wheel for the cam sensor and I've built up the rad now with the fan uh, on there as well. So we can run the fan wiring back into the ECU as well. Uh, and we're going to add little things like, I really like the original engine bay light. So I'm going to put that back in. So we'll need to make sure we've got a, a power wire to that. We've got washer bottle, we'll have horn. Um, and then I'm going to make a decision on the battery whether I keep it there in the original position by the exhaust manifold or maybe relocate in the boot and keep the engine bay nice and clean. So a few little things I'm going to think through. So I think on the engine side, the wiring is all pretty much there um, because I have to build it up and then I'll show you the rest of the wiring and how I'm going to deal with that. But um, what I'm doing at the moment is taking all the original wires and labeling everything. So I've got brake switch there, I've got indicators, I've got my ignition lock, my wiper controls and so on. I'm just going through everything I can find because we're not going to need everything in the finished car. I can strip out a lot of it and I've got like the front engine bay wiring there that goes to the lights, indicators. And I want to have every component ready, so I've got all my gauges that are going to go in the car. So we make sure we've got the wires fed to those, um, and even things like the heater controls. I've got the wiper motor there, um, the what's that, the rear screen demister, so that all of these parts are ready. So we make sure we do the wiring, that nothing is missing, um, and everything is here ready to put together um, when Paul joins us on the next session. So the gearbox is ready. Dad's been prepping that painting it, getting it ready to go in. So that's all sorted. We've got the cover on for the lever, the lever mechanism ready. We've got a brand new slave there. That's mounted. Just test fitting the bearing. So just press that onto the carrier and the fork will go in there and that will operate inside. So that all seems to be good. So next job is get the gearbox up in the car. Car's already there. So the engine is in. I just had to slacken off the manifold for now because it sort of gets in the way here of the gearbox and then we'll drop the gearbox in and see what happens next. Just a little bit of copper grease on the bearing there where it's going to sit and slide on. So making sure it's free and it's smooth so it operates nice, that's nice and clean. I already cleaned the surfaces beforehand and again a little bit on the pivot there just to help that fork 
um, when it sits inside there. So it's line that up. So we've got the fork mounted in the carrier there now, so that can go into position. Thank you.